On today's show, the Cybertruck might actually get here unchanged, and Tesla and lithium, what's all that about? My name's Chris, and let's get into the news. Welcome. Spring has sprung and, well, I've had a bit too much sun. Let's get into the news, shall we? Full UK specification and pricing has been revealed for the Mazda's highly anticipated first all-electric production vehicle, the Mazda MX-30. With the UK customer deliveries beginning in March next year, this SUV features like an AC synchronous electric motor, a 35.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery that delivers a range of approximately 200 kilometers and will comes with an AC charging of up to 6.6 kilowatts and DC rapid charging. The Mazda MX-30 limited first edition of just 500 cars is available pre-order now for like £27,495 or about $50,000 Australian. And well, up around starting rather at £25,545, roughly about $46,000 for the base model available also next year in the UK. Australian release date is yet to be confirmed, however, in August, Mazda Australia marketing director like Alastair Doak, he told Go Auto that Mazda have plans to get it here at a price point below $60,000. So, hoping so. They're doing it. These guys are doing it too. And well, from next year, Audi Australia will be powering its operations from 100% renewable energy. You see, the Audi e-tron and now the Audi e-tron Sportback are available now from like the initial network of like seven e-tron dealers in Australia. And well, you can even go online to audi.com.au, God, this sounds like an advert, and order from there. And well, prices are like from $137,100 for the Audi e-tron 50 through to $169,350 for the Sportback variant. Audi is shifting its power to like renewable energy sources in a bid to achieve zero emissions motoring. The e-tron is made like in Brussels, which is actually the world's first certified carbon neutral large scale production plant in the actual premium market segment. And well, they have an ambitious product plan to like get 30 electrified models by 2025. So to match this, Audi Australia have purchased like from Capital Wind Farm precinct near Canberra to deliver on this goal. Okay, time to check in on my EV incentives petition and well, we have almost a thousand signatures. If you haven't like, done so already, please do check it out. And like we need our government to introduce incentives to help Australia into like electric cars. By choosing to drive an EV, not only would you be helping to like reduce local air pollution, total greenhouse gases and all other emissions, but will also save the government significant money through not having to provide subsidies to fossil fuel companies, which in Australia amounted to $27 billion in 2019. That's about $50,000 per minute or this much money so far for this episode. So by showing the government that a lot, a lot of Australians actually care about this and that they want an EV to help make this change. The only way that we can accelerate our move towards zero emissions transport is to make EVs more affordable. So please do sign that admission, that, that petition, share it with your friends, or talk to your friends, talk to your politician even. Just get the word out there because a lot more needs to be done in this space. Airbus has revealed three concepts for the world's first zero-emission commercial aircraft, which could enter service by 2035. Now, unlike smaller electric planes I've shown on this channel before, all of these concepts rely on like hydrogen to as a primary power source, an option which Airbus believes holds exceptional promise on a clean aviation future, and is well likely to be the solution for long-haul aviation or codenamed Zero E for a first climate neutral zero emission commercial aircraft, they include a turbofan design which can carry up to 200 passengers and a range of 3,700 kilometers. Then there's a turboprop design capable of carrying like up to 100 passengers and traveling a distance of no more than 1,800 kilometers. And then there's this, the most out there version of a blended wing body design, whereby the wings merge with the main body of the aircraft with a range similar to that of the turbofan concept. The exceptionally wide fuselage opens up like a multitude of options for hydrogen storage, distribution, and well, obviously cabin layout. 
Now, to me, these hold a lot of promise if and well, it's a big if, anons actually source the hydrogen through electrolysis using clean green energy sources, like from solar and wind. For airports, that will mean new challenges to like store, transport, and have the right sort of refueling infrastructure to the, meet the needs of the day-to-day -day operations of these new aircraft. So what do you think? Will this actually be a thing of the future? Comment down below. Okay, concept car time. So let's all agree, don't get too excited as this will most likely n never end a production, like ever. Hmm, yeah, nah. So I give you Honda SUV E concept. A good looking car is ever there was one. Unveiled at the 2020 Beijing International Automotive Exhibition, Honda has stated that the concept is indicating the direction of a future mass production model of the Honda brand's first electric vehicle to be like introduced to China. Now, the reason I'm so down on Honda isn't because of, well, Honda EV, nor this car. Rather, it's because, wait, wait, Hang on a second, let me invite my very special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Honourable, Honourable, question mark, Angus Taylor. He's our Minister for like Energy and Emission Reductions, who to date is yet to actually provide an EV policy and nor plan for our, gay, our great country of ours. So, Angus, the reason for my cynicism is that Honda is making these EVs not because they want to, oh no. It's because they're having to address European and Chinese emission regulations, which are forcing them, keyword, forcing them to produce these EVs. You see how easy it is to actually get away from dirty ice cars? You just have to legislate and businesses and individuals will actually answer the call and will car makers will bring out cleaner and greener cars, such as electric vehicles. On Monday last week, Australian mining group Piedmont Lithium said it signed a five-year deal with Tesla to like supply 160,000 tonnes per year of sputamine concentrate. That's like a lithium mineral to the US electric car maker. The news prompted like an 83% surge in Australian lithium miners shares and will no doubt be a great sign of things to come. Hashtag Oz politicians pay attention because obviously the future isn't coal or gas, but rather lithium and nickel, of which we actually had the world's largest supply, Elon. In a world that needs a powerful hero. Power when it's needed, where it's needed able to assist in the aftermath of a natural disaster, delivering large mobile battery supply of power, recovery, operations, and what more. This relief hero is... Yes, that was a modified Nissan Leaf with weatherproof plug sockets mounted directly to the exterior of the vehicle to like enable like 110 to 230 volt devices to be powered from the car's high capacity lithium power battery. Yeah. So, the reed leaf, as it's called, can be driven into like the center of a disaster zone and provide a fully mobile power supply to aid the recovery efforts. Just think, not just like Nissan EV, but like any maker for that matter, could fit out one of its cars to provide integrated energy management for things like medical devices, communication, lighting, or maybe life support. So this I think could be really done quite well with Rivian and well Tesla. And whilst I had fun putting together that music package at the start there, this is actually quite a very serious application for electric vehicles and will goes to show that the weekend is not ruined. The Cybertruck, yes, this polarizing beast of a machine could very well be heading down under. Once again on battery day, Elon confirmed that other than America, the rest of the world will most likely have a pared down version of this massive, massive uh, utility truck. Yeah, what is it called utility truck? Mm. So well, with thanks to fellow Australian Nash, AKA Tesla and the Gong, he got into Elon's Twitter feed and will ask the man this, we really wish to have the OG Cybertruck in all its glory here in Australia and not a smaller version, please.
To which Elon replied, if it passes Australian regulations, then sure. And so what does any fan or Tesla start doing? Investigating how this can become a reality and well, yep, it shouldn't be a problem. A $150 deposit secures your place in a line for on Tesla Australia's website and well, watch this space. All right, that will wrap it for this episode today. I really do hope you've enjoyed it and well, thank you for watching. Now, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. It does sincerely help the channel. If you wanna learn more about renewable technologies like solar, wind, battery, and everything else, hey, do it. I put out a video once per week, sometimes even more, depending on what's happening in the world at the time. And if you wanna to go to the next level, join me over on Patreon, where you get early access, polls, news, things you just don't get here, as well as Discord access. And a big, big thank you to my producer level patrons, and that is Ashley Hill, Nigel Farrier, Ray Johnson, and Tessa and the Gong. All right, you know what you can do, be good and be green.